Hey again, how are you all? Thanks for joining. Today we're going to do a little splotch monster demo. My name is Steve and I just want to thank Elizabeth Bracey for hosting this wonderful um, afternoon um, arts um, event every, every lunchtime, every day at 12 noon. Thank you, Elizabeth. And thank you guys for joining. So today we are going to make splotch monsters. Um, and splotch monsters are basically made by using watercolors. And you could use all kinds of drawing materials like pens, markers, crayons, even pencils. Whatever you have around, you can use. So if you tuned in a couple of weeks ago, I did a splotch monster demo. And you might remember these guys. Um, so these are kind of a little more, I guess you could say, um, thanks, Elizabeth. These are a little more pre-planned. So a lot of time you can a lot of times you can make text or some kind of name um, through splotch monsters. And right now, I'm working on the letter O. So if you look, working on the mouth. And in a couple minutes, I'm going to show you guys some examples of paint splotches and splotch monsters that I've already made. Mm -hmm. And I'll also show you how to make a paint splotch. And once again, thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and work on it later. And first I'm going to show you some examples of paint splotches. And you could use any kind of watercolor set. You could use a cheap watercolor set from Target or Michaels or whatever. Um, the kind I have, these are actually my wife Chris's. And um, these kind you can use from a tube. You could just squirt it into a palette, like a plastic palette. And they'll come out kind of wet and they'll dry later. And then you could just activate them by dipping your brush in water. Just kind of putting your brush on the paint. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But first, here are a couple paint splotches that I made. These are pre-made. I let them dry overnight. Hey, Kim. How are you? And then with me, I also have some actual splotch monsters. So these were made from random paint splotches. So this one was influenced by a rainy day. So you can see the rain coming down. You can see the little puddles. He has a little hat on and an umbrella. This one was a collaboration with my wife, Chris, who um, she did the floral part and the plants. I did the face kind of like a dinosaur. I guess you could say I never really grew out of making dinosaurs. And this one resembles, I guess, a firefly. If you look closely, I add a little firefly. This was made in the summertime. Here's another summer paint splotch or splotch monster. Um, this one was influenced by something I'm very scared of, and that's poison oak. If you tune into the last one I did, I showed Poison Ivy, and then this one is Poison Oak. So, trying to convey that through the plants and the faces. This one's a little scarier. And sometimes I do holiday-influenced splotch monsters. You can see this one is influenced by Easter. And this one was made on a type of, a really cool type of paper called Yupo paper. Um, it's not like watercolor paper. It has kind of a slippery surface to it. And the watercolor paints go on kind of, kind of wet and streamy and streaky. So you do have to be careful. You have to let it dry for a while, probably longer than normal. And this one was from a series of skateboarding splotch monsters. And here's one, this is from a set I did for something called Inktober. So every October, there's a call to artists to use some kind of ink. In this case, instead of watercolors, I used India ink, black India ink. And you get these nice um, different gray tones. And for each day in October, I did a number. And you could probably guess what number this one is. It's 
kind of a, a sea monster. If you look closely, you can see the, um, the fins. So I get a lot of influence by, from mythical beasts and realistic animals. Here's another number. This one's more like a horse or some kind of strange unicorn. You can see the hooves, the mane. And the type of pen I use for um, drawing mostly is Pigma Micron pens. However, you can use any kind of pen. You don't have to use these. I will say if you're younger, you want to be careful because these can break easily. They are kind of expensive, but um, this is the brand here, Micron. Okay, so let's make some paint splotches. So here is just a small sheet of watercolor paper, about postcard size. I like working small, but you can work any size you want. And I have my palette and a jar of water and a couple brushes. So we got some watercolor brushes. One's big, one's small. And anytime you get started painting, you really want to load that brush with water. Ava Ann's here. Hey, Ava Ann, thanks for joining. I bet you appreciated the, uh, the skateboard splotch monster. Okay, so let's activate the paint. And I really don't plan ahead of time. I just kind of play around. And notice how I use the entire, all the bristles. I just kind of go around. Let's try a new color. And I always dip my brush back in the water before getting a new color. Let's mix these a bit. And let's get a darker color. You notice how I'm going slowly. I'm not really hurrying. Hey Jess, thanks for joining again. Love the splotch monsters that you and the kids did recently. Love them. Now I'm going to add some salt. And you don't have to do this, but I have a little thing of salt. Make sure, kids, you ask your parents at home if you're going to use salt. But salt adds a nice texture to any watercolor. I'm just gently sprinkling it on. You don't want to add too much. Let's add a little more color. Now, I used a lot of water with this one. And what I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see me. I kind of get these nice streaks. And you can let it kind of drip and just kind of shift your watercolors a bit. I'm going to add a little more salt. Oh, so if you're wondering, I, I wasn't sure if that translated um, through the phone, but I actually blew on it. You could use a straw or you could just kind of um, get up close. Just try not to get too close. A lot of times I've accidentally um, gotten paint on my mouth, so you do want to be careful. Now, the one thing you have to do is set these aside. Unfortunately, you can't draw on them right away. The nice thing about watercolor is that it does dry pretty quickly. However, if you use salt, you do when I let it sit overnight for a bit. All right. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to work on some pre-made paint splotches. So I made a few. Guess I was really in the purple. And again, when I make these, I really don't think too much about what they're going to look out look like. In fact, I try not to think at all. It's almost like a stream of conscious approach to painting. And then later I'll look at it and I'll turn them around from every angle. So we'll start from this angle. And maybe we see something from this angle. A lot of times people see things right away 
I take a lot of influence or inspiration from animals and wildlife, also fictional creatures and monsters. Okay, so let's put that down and let's get started drawing. So right away, I see almost like the profile of a face kind of looking from the side. So I'm going to get my pen and I like this line right here. So I can put a mouth anywhere, but I'm going to follow that line. Okay. And this is where the neck might be. So I'm going to add some little wrinkles where the neck might be turning, just some details. And then I'm going to look for a place for the eye. So since it is a profile view, we might see one eye. However, I tell people when you make these, you can't mess up. It's a monster. You could add as many eyes as you want. You could put them anywhere you want. Let's give it a little personality. We'll give it an eyebrow and some nostrils. And since this one has a lot of purple, I'm going to add some purple. This is a type of marker called a Prismacolor marker. These work really nice because you have a, um, like a thicker end and a thinner tip. And I'm going to add a leg right here. So again, we're looking at this guy from the side. You do want to be careful because these are very powerful markers. They do have kind of an odor to them. And um, if your paper is not thick enough, it can go through the paper. So just keep that in mind when you're working with them, if you have some. Hey, Pam, thanks for joining. Here's another Prismacolor. I'm just going to turn this over and let's add a tail. This is a pretty bright shade of pink, almost fuchsia. So what I'm going to do after I color the tail, I might add some kind of pattern maybe spots or stripes just to give it a little more visual interest if you look at wildlife and if you look at nature it's amazing how many different kinds of patterns animals have different kinds of um, textures even so let's add how about maybe along the back i'm just going to flip them upside down let's add some spots Kind of like, um, I guess the pattern you see on a cow, but instead of black, we've got this bright fuchsia. Okay, let's make one big one here. Now this critter obviously needs arms and also another leg. So I'm going to create the illusion of another leg over here. This one is on the other side of the animal or creature or monster. And it's not getting much light. So we're kind of seeing what I would call the silhouette of that leg. So this one is on the other side. It appears a little smaller, a little higher and you don't see color. Okay. Let's get a thinner pen. This is just kind of a, a regular paper mate pen. These work nicely when you're drawing and coloring. Let's make this overlap a little too. We'll do that. And 
and we're going to give it nails. So I'm going to stop coloring right up to this point and leave that white. And just like with the leg on the other side, we're going to do that too with the arm on the other side. So this will be all black. So again, sky's the limit with monsters. You can't mess up. You know, a lot of times I'll intend to do something and I completely mess up. It's not what I wanted to do, but then I, I kind of like it and I embrace that mistake and I turn it into something new. It's called a happy accident. Okay, I guess we're going with a purple theme here. Let's add, okay, it says Franklin, we are having trouble getting the paint to spread by balloon. Oh, so very good question. So what you want to do is, and I'm going to show you how to do that again, is um, just load it with more water. Just use more water when you're doing this. Um, the more ha water you have, the easier it is. You do want to be careful though, because if you blow on it too hard, um, it could go off the paper. And that's not a problem. I mean, if, if you're okay with that. Hey, thank you, Richard. That's a nice comment coming from a cartoonist like you. I appreciate it. I love to see what you do with them, Richard, if you ever make one. Okay, let's add some. I always like to make those lights kind of like what you'd see, um, I guess, on an angler fish for whatever reason. So, Franklin Park said, we're having trouble to get the paint to spread by blowing. Yeah, I just answered that, and I'm, I told him I would do a demo. Okay. okay, so I'm going to do, in case anyone missed it, I'm going to do another, um, just show people how to add a, make a splotch again, and show people how to make the streaks by blowing on it. So, I'm going to put this little guy aside. And again, we're loading the brush with water. Let's push this up a little more. And just kind of loosely applying the paint. Notice how I'm using the whole side of my brush. I'm not, so, you know, when you do this, you get really thin marks. And you can do that if you want. <laughs> I haven't. Is that something you can do, Richard? I didn't know you could. I know um, sometimes Chris uses a blow dryer to um, quickly dry the watercolors. That's a good question. So see how I used a lot of water in this one? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my brush away. Let's see if I could get in here. So, were you able to see that at all? But really, the, the key is just using a lot of water. And it's nice to kind of let the, the color shift and kind of mix. Let's add a little more salt. Not too much. Now what you do, you let that sit overnight, and then you can just gently brush it off in the garbage can or in your sink, wherever. And you get a really beautiful texture. Okay, so I'm going to make one more. So we saw this guy. Let's try another one. Okay, so let's look at it from different angles. So we have this cool horizontal angle. This one has a lot of streaks we can work with. Maybe you see something from this angle. This one. 
So again, I try not to think of what to make at first. I just kind of make random splotches and then I make it into something. So I'm kind of seeing a bird. So let's make this into a, a strange bird. Oh, you see it too, Jess? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I'm seeing a bird too. We're going to give it a beak. So let's make a beak here, but it's going to be a different color beak. Color that in. We're going to leave that white. That'll be the bird's nostril. Start out with a beak. A lot of times I usually start with either the mouth or the eye, but somewhere on the face. And let's give this guy a tongue. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to use this. This is a nice brush pen. What's up, Haley? Thanks for joining. And you can see it kind of works like a, an actual brush. It has a nice tip, a thick tip. This is called a Tombow acid-free brush pen. It's black. Let's use a thick tip. We're going to give this one a big eye right about here. Let's add a little blue to that eye. I'm not sure if it will show, but we'll try it. Kind of dark. I like it. You know, this bird needs some feet. So let's add some feet. Add some bird feet. There used to be a place in Leesburg called the Smithsonian Naturalist Center. And they had a lot of animal specimens, um, bones, fossils. It was a great place. I used to go there all the time and practice sketching. And I feel like if you draw from observation, then you can really apply that to things you do with your imagination. It just enhances your work. And let's add another one back here. And again, we'll shade that in. Now, if you want, you could add some kind of background too. So we're gonna add, maybe this guy's walking around in the grass. I guess that little mark there is kind of bugging me. I don't know why, but I'm going to draw over it. And this is just a standard Sharpie. Maybe our bird is looking for food or warm. Who knows? Yes, yeah, so I do have a website, um, splotchmonsterisland.com, I believe. Um, and there's a Splotch Monster Island Instagram and Facebook. I try to post there regularly. I am taking a little bit of a uh, social media hiatus. This is actually my spring break week. And... Um, we're going to go to Pittsburgh and go to Delaware to the beach, but of course that all got canceled. So I'm kind of taking a mental break from uh, social media just for a week after this demo. Let's add some different shades of green. So again, background is optional. A neat thing you can do is create stories. A lot of times when my students make these, we make stories as well. We write about them. So it could really kind of um, set the wheels in motion for creative writing. 
Let's make a sunny day. We'll add a sun up here. And let's give this bird some stripes. Thanks, Haley. Okay. Oh, hey, Leanne. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing some painting. Um, yeah, I do sell my work. Uh, currently, I'm, I don't have any for sale, but every so often I sell them um, at art exhibits, uh, sometimes online, and I'll post about that. Uh, thank you, Ava. I hope you're doing well. Hope you enjoyed your dance party, your virtual dance party. I still have to tune into that. All right, so that's it for today. I do want to thank you all for joining me on uh, this little mini Splotch Monster making adventure. And if you make any yourselves, you can post them. I did a post on the uh, Splotch Monster Island uh, Facebook page. You're more than welcome to post them in the comments. Um, if you do, I will compile them into a virtual gallery. I have a Splotch Monster blog. And that's where I um, compile everybody's work if you'd like it to be featured. Um, we'd love to see what you do. So thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Ava. Well, thank you for joining us. Thanks again to Elizabeth. Thank you, Phoebe. Appreciate it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy this, this beautiful sunny Sunday. Yeah, please post your work. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Franklin Park Art Center. Take care, everybody. Bye.